Play the odd man out game. If you don't play the odd man out game, you won't notice which one's bad. Because like Pierre said, what's the chances of all four injectors being bad? Now the question Can it happen? Sure. sure. And the other thing that can happen is you can have a systemic problem, i.e. extremely high fuel pressure, for example, that'll skew those readings. But that, I think, falls under the check the basics category. Yeah. Always check the basics. And by the way, fuel pressure is not the only answer. A lot of them, there's a good case study, an article that I wrote on, uh, in fact, the Jeep, just like this Jeep, it was a 2003, the guy had the exact pressure that the manufacturer recommended, but guess what? It wasn't pressure, it was volume. volume. And same the problem. same thing comes true with what we have up on the screen. Voltage is pressure, right? Voltage is pressure. Amperage is flow. Amperage does the work. And that's what you always want to look at. A starter could have 12 volts. Doesn't mean anything until we see current draw that it's doing any work. So always deal with amperage, in my opinion. Uh, Craig, maybe if you zoom in here, you can see the OTC amp clamp. It's upside down. But we're actually hooked up right to the car. And here's another thing I want you to be aware of. If you're on number one injector with voltage, make sure your amp clamp is on the same injector. A lot of people go, well, I got a voltage reading, but my amperage reading is all the way off the screen. Well, that's true if you're on a different one because the firing is different. And sometimes we do this with, you know, multiple channels. We want to be on number one and a different channel um, is on maybe number three. And it's not going to line up. What do you do? Take your time base and close it up. Another good trick for you, we just did a hands-on TST seminar, one out in Long Island on uh, meters and scopes, and we just did another one out in uh, Waterbury, Connecticut area, um, where we uh, actually hooked up scopes and stuff, and we were showing people what to do with the scope. And I want to tell you, Craig, I want you to go back to the screen here, of when you're looking for a signature test, this is signature, that's all well and good, but when you get a glitch or a misfire, I want you to take your scope, and I want you to take the scope and take the time and change this time. What Jerry's doing is he's tightening up the waveform so we have many, many multiple repetitions. Because if you have a dropout, the odds are you're never going to see it on the screen. However, if you, uh, as we call it, picket fence it, so that you can't really identify what the signature of that signal is, but you can see dozens or hundreds of them, what will happen is the odd man out will stand up. It'll, you'll see it immediately that there's a gap. Yeah, and you know, if you look at that, you see when one drops out. Yep, there's a gap. Okay, so there you have a dropout. Of course, Jerry created that dropout by disconnecting the lead, but if it was a real uh, misfire in the car, you'd also see it. So again, it doesn't matter that it doesn't look like it did before. We're just looking at these to see which one dropped out. By the way, I'll give you a quick Good hint, if you're driving down the road and the car's hiccuping and you're not sure, you know, your scan tool doesn't tell you the information because it doesn't pick it up, it can't be as fast as the scope, okay? You put the scope on it and you're not sure if it's dropping out because it's ignition or fuel. Put one on ignition, one channel on ignition, one on fuel. If they both fall out the exact same time, you got an ignition problem. If Ignition keeps going and fuel drops out, hello, there's your problem somewhere in the fuel. And again, we're trying to do this real quick. We yeah, there's an exception to that. Actually, the exception, the one exception I can think of is if they both take power from the same main relay. Right, and then the relay, you're uh, Yeah, so there's a lot of ifs there. We're trying to cram a lot into a short time. But the bottom line is, think systemically. Definitely. And now what we're doing, we're going to go back and I'm going to make it look like a regular signature. And it's easy as that. Again, you know, the controls are really nice where you can just change things up or down where we can move. You notice how I just moved the line up or down? And that was from clicking on the side. So I can change my scaling. So you see, I'm off the screen up here, aren't I? And now I'll take that and I'll 
move it down. And Craig, while I'm doing this, um, any uh, which uh, which waveform is which color? Like what what channel? The um, the yellow waveform is the injector, the voltage signal. The green waveform is the amperage signal. Uh, and you could put it on either one. The point is, in a case like this, you want to trigger on a 50% of that waveform so you get a good stable image. And Doesn't matter which. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. If, if you tried to trigger off the amperage waveform here, it would be very difficult to get a stable image because it has a ramp to it unless you were to trigger on the downslope and then you'd miss most of it. Um, so basically now what I did, I overlaid them. Okay? And you can see I have the fuel injector voltage in yellow and green is my amperage. Again, as voltage goes down, amperage goes up. I'll make a little bit the, more. The, the fast and dirty rule here is if you don't get a stable signal, change your trigger point to, to make it so you do get a stable signal. So right there, we're pretty much right on top of each other. And we can see that they're both going back and forth. Again, voltage down, amperage up. Any other questions? Okay, so, you know, you got a powerful tool here. We could do a record. There's no playback file, but let me go back. If we want to, uh, excuse me, yeah. We want to pause something, we could pause it. We want to record, notice this. So now it's doing its thing. 